of all, I want to say thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight because this is a valuable time in your life today. There's something you're going to hear today. I'm going to promise you three things from this presentation today. And you got to hold me to it. You promise to hold me to it? Sure, sure. All right. Number one is you're going to learn at least three golden nuggets that you can apply to yourself and your life today. And you can use it tomorrow whenever you want to use it. Number two, there may be one thing that I say today, tonight, that may change the trajectory of your life. That's big, isn't it? That's big. But the third and final thing is, you're going to have fun. You got ready to have fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> First of all, my name is Kevin M. Coleman of KMC Empowerment. And I want to, we're going to do a lot of call and response. We're going to do a lot of interactive things, okay? And the first call and response is this. My three words. Inspire. 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 Motivate. Motivate. Lead. Lead. That's what I do. That's what we do at KMC Empowerment. We inspire individuals and groups through coaching. Individual coaching, group coaching, executive coaching, that's what we do. But we motivate individual and groups through empowerment speaking, speaking engagements, things of that nature, going to businesses, going out to <coughs> public speaking and doing things like I'm doing right now. But last but not least, we teach leaders how to lead with excellence through trainings like I'm doing today. I'm looking at communication, it's one of my specialties, communication. But I also specialize in leadership. A lot of different leadership trainings. Now, you guys ready for this thing? Yeah. Right, here we go. And one thing I want to say about John. <laughs> Not you, John. <laughs> Not you, John. John Maxwell. We'll be talking about a book today called Everyone Communicates, Few Connect by John C. Maxwell. And anybody know who John Maxwell is? Oh, yeah. What you know about John Maxwell? He's my mentor. He, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Three books. Three books. Which books do you like? <clears throat> he has so many. How do you have this one? But he has a million of them. Laws. Fifteen invaluable laws of growth. That's it. Seventeen laws of teamwork. I mean, a slew of them. Who else knows John Maxwell? Thank you. <coughs> what you know about John Maxwell, John? Well, just his leadership book. It's got a good first name. Yeah, great first name. <laughs> and I'm going to leave something. You ready to have fun, so we're going to have fun right now. John, one thing, one of John Maxwell's favorite quotes is, my name is John, and I'm your friend. <laughs> and then you hear everybody kept saying John is his friend. <laughs> yes, that's the first thing. So what we're going to do is, we're going to talk about this book. But before we get into the book, I want you guys to look at, anytime you see a book, a lot of times people like to look at the name of the book, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect. But what I like to look at is the subcaption. Do you guys ever look at the subcaption of a book? It's really powerful because it really gives you, it really harnesses what the book is about in one complete sentence. This subcaption is what the most effective people do differently. And when we go through this training today, you're going to learn some tricks and some tools, not only for your networking, your job search, your transition, whatever you're trying to do, you're going to learn today. But we're going to start off with this ball. You guys ready to play a little ball? Who can catch in here? <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, now I'm, at, now I'm going to ask you guys something. The way we do this is I'm going to toss the ball to him, right? He's, everybody going to get a chance. You can pass it to the ladies in case they don't want to get it kept. Go catch it. But when you get the ball, when you catch it, Wherever your dominant thumb is, whatever hand you have it on, I want you to read what it says, and then you need to tell us whether or not that's a positive communication strategy or a negative one. You guys ready? Here we go. Say it loud. Say it loud. <laughs> take your time. Take your time. So when you're communicating, you should take your time. Do you think that's positive or negative? Positive. It's positive. It's positive. It is positive. Thank you for giving a round of applause. We're going to encourage each other. All right, let's go to Lisa next. Right behind you. <laughs> All right. Take your time. It doesn't work. No, we're not going to do it. Hey, she's doing it. Okay. Use unfamiliar acronyms. Ooh. <laughs> is that a positive or a negative? Negative. 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 Yeah. All right, definitely negative. When you use unfamiliar acronyms, except for KMC and Power, okay, you can have it. You can have Michael Cole. But anyway, but when you use unfamiliar acronyms, it slows down that communication. 
you need to, and if you're in a good environment, we are, I just got through doing a presentation today for a group of accountants, about 200 accountants in uh, Richmond. And when I did the presentation, I noticed when I went up there initially, I got there around 8 o'clock in the morning, and I was listening to the presenters before I had to go up. And when they were speaking, I know they used a lot of acronyms. And it was unfamiliar to me because I'm not an accountant. However, it was familiar to the audience because they all were accountants, they knew what it was. But, it, but you're right, in common language, using the acronyms is not really positive because you're not letting people in on what you're talking about. You're next. She called okay. it. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Rephrase what you heard. Rephrase what you heard. Is that a good one or a bad one? Good. good. It's good. Rephrase what you heard. Now, sometimes, you know, you can do that and it can seem like it's annoying, but you know when you need to rephrase it and you need to say it back to the person because what you're doing is active listening and you let them know that you receive what they're saying to you. Somebody else, pass right behind you. Give her a round of applause, then give him one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Acknowledge emotional reaction. Whoa. That's a little challenging one. Is that a positive or negative? Positive. 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 And the way you do it, you have to be sensible. You have to be sensible. Remember you were talking about emotional intelligence? You have to use that. You know, when you talk to someone and you see some people have it going through something, Use emotional intelligence to recognize it for what it is. You don't have to call it out, but you, there's a way that you can care, handle yourself that they, you can be effective in that communication, okay? Next one. Here you go. Linda, Linda was ready for it back then. <laughs> <laughs> You're going next one. Uh, so, say no. Say no. Say no. Say no. Without explanation or apology. Woo! <laughs> say no without explanation or apology. Is that a positive? Raise your hand. Negative. Or is it a negative? It's a negative. It's a negative. It's a negative. It's a negative. Okay. Say no without, I, I'm doing it wrong. Sometimes you're in a management position and you have to say no and you don't need to have time to apologize or make an excuse. But at the same time, just common courtesy, it is good to follow up with the rationale why you're saying no, okay? Linda, you're next. Give a round of applause. Good catch, Linda. Oh, that one's already been done, so. Yeah, there you go. That's good. <laughs> Let them vent. Let them vent. Is that a positive or negative? Positive. It's a positive. Let them get it out. If, you, if you're speaking to someone, I don't care if you're in an interview and, and people have something before you wait for the interview, you have someone that works there and they're to talk about the organization that you're interviewing for. You ever been in that situation? Mm -hmm. I've seen it before. It's not a good one. Let them vent because your focus is on getting in there, Present yourself in a well manner and being able to come across effectively with the person that you're interviewing with. Go ahead. Give a round of applause. Oh, here. Make eye contact. I, we're not even going to say positive. That's positive. Make the eye contact. Oh, okay. We have somebody ready for that ball. We ready? Woo! Good job, John. 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 Good job, Change your name to John. No. <laughs> That's a positive. That's a positive. No. Or Kevin. Uh, even better, right? Uh, multitask during conversation. Ooh. 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 Positive or negative? Thumbs down, right? Okay. Right. Let me tell you something about fucking. I do some training on, you know, being, you know, being conscious of your time and time management, things of that nature. And people like to talk about multitask. I get a lot done. Guess what? You're not getting anything done when you're multitask. It's better to harness your time and focus on one thing for 10 to 15 minutes. It's more effective, it's clear, it's at a higher level than sitting up here trying to do several different things in one hour. All right? Next one. Give John a round of applause. Ask clarifying questions. That's a thumbs up, guys. Come on. That is perfect. When you have, when you're in an interview, or, or even if you're in a workplace and you're working with other people, if you don't understand something, or even if you do understand, you just want to get very clarity on it. Ask that question, so you can be very clear and concise on what was being said to you. How, even when you're in an interview, you know, sometimes they say questions that come so fast at you. You sit on the panel and you're okay. Could you please repeat that question? It, that's not hurting you on an interview. It gives you time to digest it, understand what's being said, and you can, you know, regurgitate your answer in a powerful way. Give a round of applause. <laughs> Next person. And thank you for inspiring and motivating. 
that, 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 that cube is up nice. That <laughs> Politely disagree. Politely disagree. Like that. like that's, that's a thumbs up. Very good. Every now and then you may have to disagree with someone, but if you do it in a way that they can receive it, it's not a problem. Give them a round of applause for that. I want to give this to you, ma'am, before you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, repeat what you hear. Repeat what you hear. I think we said that already, but, but at the same time, that is something good. Sometimes you need to repeat what you hear. So thank you guys for indulging me. Did you guys have fun with that? Mm. All right. Where'd you get the ball? Oh, uh, oh goodness, that ball? Amazon, Amazon. <coughs> it's, and I, I have so many balls for different trainings I give, but I sometimes I use balls, sometimes I don't. Is it the same company you use? Um, you get them I, I used to be a teacher. And oh yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, thumb, thumb balls? Yeah. I'll I, I give it to you, I'll give it to you. I'll definitely give it to you. If you ask me one question, and what to be more, how to be more successful, the one question is, you need to learn how to communicate effectively. That's powerful. And what we're going to do now is, and you guys did a great job with this, we're going to do a communication group survey. And again, we're going to do this real quick because I think you guys covered most of these. Positive or negative? Listen actively. Positive. That's positive. Listen actively. Active listening, shaking your head, nodding your head. You know, ask, asking those questions. Being clear on your, your responses to that. Next one. Check for understanding. What is it, positive or negative? Positive. Positive. Next one, make eye contact. We already went over there, right? Mm -hmm. Next one, multitask during conversation. No, no. Appreciate criticism. Yes. That is very positive. Sometimes people may say things to you, even in an interview, that you may not like. Or if you don't get the job, you call them back and ask questions, that's good to do. Call them, ask them, well, you know, why didn't you select me for this position? And they may tell you some things that you don't like. Use it as a way to change. Or if it's something that you don't agree with, say, okay, I accept it for what it is, but there's sometimes you may hear something that you don't like, but you may need to hear that so you can correct it, all right? In a positive way. Next one, shut up and listen. <laughs> positive. Be willing to listen so you can hear. Take your time. Same way we talk about interviews. People talking to you, take your time. Don't rush through the interview process, okay? Last one, dominate the conversation. Somebody give me, a, give me an example of somebody dominating the conversation. Who wanna come here and role play? Come on, John, give him a round of applause. <laughs> All right. John, John is gonna be the one that's dominating the conversation. I'm gonna be the one that's asking questions, okay? You ready? Oh, oh you're oh. killing me, man. Oh, come on, uh, John. Can you do it? Can you do it? I can talk. I can talk. All right, here we go. I, I do. Hey, John, my name is Kevin Coleman. How are you? Oh, pleased to meet you. How are you doing? Today? I'm doing pretty good. So what you do for a living? Oh, I'm a, uh, I help people with their personal finances. Okay. And how long have you been doing that? Almost 30 years. 30 years. What other things you like doing? Because I like doing certain things, too. What kind of things you like doing? Uh, well, I'm a big sports fan, so I love watching basketball, football, baseball, you name it. What? You're supposed to keep going. Basketball, football, you name it. I'm not asking you questions. That's the key, right? I'm, yeah, that's yeah. That, I'm playing my role, right? I'm just, I'm taking it in. I'm talking about myself. That's it. Uh, yeah. Um, so, I, I have a, a, a wonderful six-year-old who oh, keeps good. me okay. who keeps me on my toes. Uh, he's he's the apple of my eye. Oh man, he, he's getting my heart now. <laughs> he's getting my heart. Hey, give John Ron applause. <laughs> but sometimes you get situations where you may be talking to someone and they're dominating the conversation. And when you run into those situations, how should you handle it? Do you just let it go, or do you just go ahead and just move forward? You let, accept it for what it is, and you move on. But don't let it get discourage you or get you down. And sometimes it may be an appropriate time that you can have a conversation with the individual and say, you know, I would like to say more. You know, I would like to have more conversation when we talk. You know, and, but do it in a way, be able to discern whether or not they can accept it, because some people can't accept it. Next one, count to 10 if you're angry. Is that a positive or a negative? Positive. positive. That is a positive all the way. Sometimes 
we talk about, we were talking about emotional intelligence and, and also, um, uh, what is it, mindfulness. That's a powerful tool. I, I, I'm, it'd be perfect one day you talk to people about that. Because with mindfulness, sometimes you can even do breathing exercise. You can be in the midst of a meeting and something can be going on hectic. You can do some breathing exercise, count to 10, and, and you can really gather your thoughts, you can calm yourself down and still be effective in that conversation. Next one, use unfamiliar acronyms. We got that. Next one, rephrase what you heard. We got that one. Roll your eyes, we know that's right. <laughs> Repeat what you hear, we had got that one. Take notes, is that a positive? Yes. It is a positive. It can be looked to as a negative sometimes too, but it is a positive. I, I have a question. Please. Should you ask permission to take notes before you take them? I, I like to ask for permission. Uh, I know I do, I do a lot of coaching, that's what I do. And even when I'm coaching someone, if I'm doing, I, I do a lot of phone coaching, but I also do coaching in person. And sometimes when I'm sitting there, I, I can get the vibe whether or not I should be, you know, taking notes. But a lot of times I like to keep that eye contact. We'll talk about that too, about keeping eye contact and things of that nature. Last one, listen for the unsaid. Positive. Powerful, powerful. And, we should, and that's kind of active listening as well, because you're, you're, you look at the nonverbals, you look at the body movements and things, emotion. Now, connecting increases your influence in every situation. Every situation. One thing we say at John Maxwell is this. Leadership is influence. Nothing more, nothing less. Every situation, every person you run across, you're influencing them in certain <coughs> ways. Some people think I'm not a leader. But you are a leader. If you're influencing someone, you're a leader. If you're a parent, you're a leader. A, a godmother, a aunt, whatever. But one thing I want to tell you about connecting is this. What ways do you guys think about connect, how you can influence people to connect? And I'm going to tell you four ways. All right, I give you four ways. Remember, I want you to write this down. Ford. F-O-R-D. Henry Ford, you know, car, whatever. Anyway, you want to remember this, but please remember this, because connecting increases influence in every situation. The F means this. Talk about family. Ask people about their family. That's one way to start connecting with people. O, ask about their occupation. That's another way of connecting with people. R, we got two R's. One is, <laughs> sound familiar, don't it? There's two, R's, <laughs> two R's and four? No, there's one R, but I'm, I'm gonna use two times. <laughs> the first, the, the first R is talk about recreation. Ask them about recreation, right? Also ask them about what they do for relaxation, right? And the D is this. I just got through doing a training uh, called uh, uh, we'll Put Your Dreams to the Test. Ask them about what they dream about. What is that aspiration? What inspires you? What is that one thing you would do if you never had any, if you had a, money was no option? What would you do? That way you really get to know people and it's so in depth. That's getting deeper now. That's not just connect, that's it's getting real deep now. Because you're really thinking about, you're really getting their innermost thoughts and their feelings. And they really open up to you. Am I right? You're right. All right, here we go. Next one. The number one criteria for advance or promotion is the effective communicating. Harvard Business. They don't lie, do they? Okay. Now, we're going to talk about five skills or qualities of successful leaders. Now, don't worry about presidents. Don't worry about, we're not part of something. Don't worry about none of that stuff. Just listen to these five ways. The first one is vision. When people are able to connect, they have a good vision. They have a good way of looking at how they forecast or, or vision casting in their lives and others. Another one is pragmatism. Next one is consensus building. Good connectors know how to build consensus from people around them. One more is charisma. Go ahead, please. Can I ask you about pragmatism? Please. Can you tell me more about that? Please. Well, private, well when you look at things from a pragmatic form of view, and I'm going to talk something about that at the end. Watch okay. It. Last one. Trustworthiness. And that's something that's critical. You have to be trustworthy, and that's the way you really get people to pull them in. Now, let's go back. Out of these five, which one is not a real connector? Read your Pragmatism. Pragmatism. That's not really. I mean, vision. 
consensus building, charisma, trust, we're all connecting type of mechanisms you use to build relationships. Pragmatism, many of your thoughts, how you feel. You know, you have a pragmatic mindset of how you look at life. Okay, so that's one thing. I mean, it's good to feel that way, but it's not the same thing as really trying to connect with people. That's more what you want and how you feel. Next one, connecting is the ability to identify with people and relate to them in ways that increases influences with them. Now listen, when we're talking about this, there's always a way to influence people, but we always talk about influencing people ethically. Not in, because you, you know, you hear about people influence people the wrong way. We're talking about ethical influence. Now, three components of connecting. What 40 plus do? These are three major components of connecting. First one, you know 40 plus, right? How many people know about 40 plus? You're in here, all right? You know what they do. You know their mission state. You know their value state. Also, like. You like 40 plus because you wouldn't be here if you didn't like them. You see the benefits of what they give you in your life and how they can help put you on the right trajectory for a new employment. And also, what we talked about before, trust. So the three components of connecting is know, like, and trust. So if you want to connect with people, they got to know who you are, they got to like who you are, and they need to trust you for who you are. All right? Now, soft skills. Do you know the power of a smile? How many of you guys know the power of a smile? Everybody I met in here today, when I first met you, what I had on my face? Smile. A smile. A smile is powerful. Whether you're looking for a job, whether you're even talking to your spouse, you gotta have a smile. You gotta be able to be inviting. And here's an acronym for smile so you can understand what I mean by this. Smile, when you smile, people see you. Of course they see you. But they see that smile and that expression on your face to see that you're approachable. Next one, it's magnetic. You ever see somebody just sit up here frowning? And do you see them smiling? It, it makes you want to draw closer to them. Next one, I. It shows that you, I, you value them. I value you. Next one, it makes you feel likable. And last one is, and I love this one, empower. When you smile, you empower. It feel like you're empowered. I know I went to this, my wife and I, we go on vacation, we do the various different things, like all of us do. And one thing, I went to this one place, we go to this one place every year. We go to a Hampton because we do a college tour and all like this for some high school students. And this one hotel we stay at every single year, there's this one lady, she helps with the food and everything like that. I love her. Every time I see her, she got that great big smile, inviting, she make me feel likable, it's magnetic, she has all those attributes. But just by her smile, it makes us go back there every time. We always book it again every year, just because of one person. And I let her supervise her though. You know, I even give her extra money, you know, and things of that nature. Just because of your smile. Your smile can be infectious for other people in their lives. Now, how are you as an influencer when connected? Remember we talked about being a leader and being an influencer? So let's talk about this. In your organization, how would you influence people in the organization? If you work somewhere, how would you influence people there? Anybody? What ways? Bring them together in a meeting. Followers. <coughs> oh, he said meetings. What yeah. else? Followers, supporters. Followers, supporters. Anybody else? I, I listen to what they have to say. Yeah, listen, listen, listen. That's a great one, too. That's that's your good ways. And professionally, you can use almost the same thing you just got to say. Meetings. Having followers. And then one thing great about the followers is when you, it's one thing to have a follower, but they have to be you have to empower them in order to want to lead at some point. Professionally. Next one is personally. Now that now we're talking a little bit about what you do in your house. How are you influencing your children? You got to say six year old son? Six year old son. How do you influence him? Well, I try to practice what I preach to him. That's, that's you know, a good way. No, that's a good way. Yeah. You know, so I want to I want to set a good example. If I tell him, for example, count to ten before you you explode, then I need to do that myself. That's good stuff. Hey, he's be a good father too. Hey, man, people gonna love you too much after you leave here. <laughs> oh my goodness, this guy. What, what don't you do wrong, man? All right, last one in the community. And I think a lot of people fall short here. 
not only do we talk about organization, like how can you be an influencer as a leader, and we talk about professionally what you do, and we talk about what you're doing personally, but as a, in a community, we gotta do more. I, I talked to a gentleman that they had a great conversation with him, and he's talking about what he do as, as far as a boy scout. You know, he's a, an eagle scout. He, he leads children. He's taking them on vacations and taking them on different uh, camping trips and things of that nature. But that's how you make an impact. When you are when you are really connecting with people, you do things in a way that will make them never forget about it. Memorable moments. Things that, are, that will impact their lives, not only just impact them for today, but for the rest of their life. That's a beautiful thing. Now, what do you do when everyone you are leading or speaking to has different values, beliefs, and ideas? Anybody want to answer that? What do you do when everyone around you has different beliefs? Go ahead. Um, what you have to do is find a common ground to bring everyone oh together. Oh my goodness, I wish I had something to give you. Give her a round of applause, please. Yes. Thank you, high five, please. That was the bomb. She is absolutely correct. We're going to talk a little bit more of that later. You stole my slide, didn't you? Okay, but that's, she's absolutely correct. Leadership is all about others and so is connecting. You got to realize, even when we talk about connecting with people, you sometimes you got to re remove yourself completely. I don't think, of, even when I'm talking to you guys today, this is not about Kevin. It's about you. I want to see you succeed. I want to see you move to that trajectory I'm talking about. I want to see all those different things we talked about, the three I's, the three words that, you, that, that, that means value to you. I want to see you accomplish those things. It's not about me, it's really about you. So when you see me up here sweating, when you see me up here energetic, it's for you, not me. I'm going to have mine regardless. But I want you to get yours. And I'm going to give you something, some tools and a toolkit so you can do it. So when you connect, it's about other people and remove yourself. You know, it's not about you. And even when I'm talking about, even when you're interviewing with other cohorts, you need to think about them. Let me give you an example real quick. I'm gonna go back one quick. I'm gonna stay a little bit longer. I knew this billionaire. I have a relationship with that. I don't, I, he's not my friend, but I knew this billionaire. <laughs> and he had a meeting with a young lady. It's a story about Warren Buffett. And he had a meeting with the young lady, and she only had 10 minutes. You know, when you talk about billionaires, they own you know, big companies and things of that nature. They don't have time to be sitting with people long. She only had 10 minutes she could spend with him. So what she did was, she did her due diligence. She found out his likes, his dislikes, and she found one thing that she liked that she, that she could really help him with. He liked Diet Coke. That, he liked Diet Coke. So she came in there, she knew she only had 10 minutes with this billionaire. So she came there with a, a, a little box, you know, with a little, little ice in it, and she had a Diet Coke in there. And she sat there with the secretary and said, well, I'm here to see Warren Buffett. She said, okay, he's expecting you. You only have 10 minutes, so she went in there. So she went in the room. She sat down and said, hello, Mr. Buffett, how are you? He said, hey, how are you? You know, we, we, we get a little short on time, but yeah, what, what would you like to talk about? So she opened it up, she said, I'd like to start with Diet Coke. And he popped that Diet Coke. He just took a sip and he said, thank you. That's my favorite drink. You have an hour and a half. <laughs> now this is a story I'm telling you that John Maxwell told me. You hear what I'm saying? But at the same time, the effect of it is still the same. When you think about other people beyond yourself, you don't know what type of vast doors may open for you. You don't know what may happen for you in your life, how you may change things that may be going one way and it is completely get flipped because you did your due diligence and looked at another way. Here we go. How are you making people feel valued while connecting? Now we're getting a little deeper into networking now, okay? First one is, we're gonna talk about one-to-one. -one. We need some participation here. Next one is, in a group. Next one is, in an audience. You know, you never know when you get a chance to speak in front of an audience. And last one, as a team. First one, we're gonna talk about one-to-one. -one. Typically, when do you get a chance to connect with people one-to-one -one and make them feel valued? All the time. All the time. Interviews, okay. Now what ways, what things you need to look out for when you connect with people one-to-one -one and make them feel valued? What things you shouldn't do? Talk about yourself nonstop. Talk about yourself, beautiful, good job. Anybody else? Avoid controversy. Avoid, that's a good one, avoid controversy. And again, that's doing your homework, right? You gotta know what's going on, learn about the business. Anybody else? Be critical. 
You don't want to be critical. Yeah, you don't want to be critical. Exactly. Also, let me tell you some other ones. Be distracted. Don't be, uh, you beat me to it. You rascal. <laughs> Ron, beat me to it. But yes, and when you talk about distracting, I'll go a little deeper with that. Get off the phone. Keep that eye contact. Do the nonverbal so they make sure they understand where you're coming from. And be ready to ask questions. Have questions prepared that you may want to ask, okay? Or even stay in, when you stay engaged, this, and I love this in coaching, when you are engaged with someone, you really focus and harness all your energy into that one person, questions will come automatically. You don't have to think about what you're going to ask. It will automatically come from within. All right, next one. Next one is as a group. How do you make people feel valued when connecting as a group? And you did some of that today. Think of it. Well, I like to bring in someone who hasn't said anything yet. And I like to turn to that person and say, what are your thoughts? That, that's a good one. That's a good one. Give a round of applause for that one. I like that. In a group, she's, and she's right, and she's right in a group. I, I, I love that one for a team, too. That's a good one for a team. But as a group, come early. If you're going to a network session or you're going to a, 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 a mock interview, come early. Take time to sit with the people. Find out who the leader is of that organization so you can introduce yourself, all right? And also, when you're there, take time to just absorb what's going on around you. Have your questions ready. Be engaged when you're just talking to people. Open up conversation. If you see someone sitting by themselves on their phone, what you do? You see somebody by themselves in a, in a networking event, by themselves on their phone, what you do? I go up to them and ask them about something, about them. Give John a round of applause. Have you been here before? Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Many times when people are by themselves, whether they're on the phone or not, they want you to talk to them. They want you to say something to them. They want you to open the door of dialogue. So take your opportunity. You never know what that little interview or that little conversation would do for their life or what it would do for yours. Next one. Same thing as an audience. As an audience, what you do is, when you're going to speak before an audience, in case you get an opportunity to do that, what I like to do, I come early, have conversations, meet people, do the same thing as we were talking about with groups, right? But the key is, the only way you can make people feel engaged in groups and the audiences, when you're talking to people, build what their conversation is that you have that individual into your speech. I did that today. Because I wanted someone in here to feel like they're involved in my conversation. I mean, many people. And he, he know who he is. <laughs> because and that's how you really relate to the audience. That's how you really pull them in. That's how you, because you're speaking about things that's happening in the room. They're like, wow, he, he, he know about that. How do you know about that? I don't know about that. That's another way of gauging the audience. Great speakers were bad speakers at first. I'm gonna stay here for a second. <laughs> i never forget the first time I was supposed to speak, my first engagement, and it was at a church, you know. I was at, I was, I was at, I was at a men's meeting at my church, and this one pastor came by from, uh, he was from Norfolk, and I was, oh, he's from Suffolk, and I'm in Manassas, you know where Manassas is? Country. But anyway, but I was in Manassas. <laughs> So he came, he walked through the door, and he saw us men sitting in there, and he walked right by. He looked in there, he saw me in there, and he walked by, and he came back again. He said, I'll just come in here to check out the church, because I want, you know, think about expanding my church. And I said, okay. I said, how you doing, Reverend Wade? And he said, yeah. He said, but you want to know something? Can I, Brother Coleman, call him Brother Coleman. Brother Coleman, I want you to speak at my men's day. I just started my business October 7, 2017. This was in October. He came to me and said he wanted to speak at his men's day. So I thought I was doing something. I'm like, my Lord, he got me up and speak. So I got everything together. You know, I got my, my, my little sermon, sermon head I was going to do. I'm not a reverend, but I got my sermon head together. Got ready to speak. My brother from Norfolk came to surprise me. He was there with my wife and my kids. My brother saw me speak. And I love my brother, y'all. I love him. But after I got through speaking, I said, I said, Larry, how you like it? He said, don't quit your day job. <laughs> <laughs> So what I'm getting at is this. Sometimes you, you may think you're doing something, you're really not doing anything, it takes time. So even if you're not a real speaker, you don't get out often, you don't do those type of things, you still need to be able to convey yourself in a powerful way, and it takes time to get there, all right? That's the more of the story. Next one, how you making people feel valued as a team? You already said one, that was a great one too. What other ways can you make people feel valued? 
I oh because uh, I was a coach. I highlight what their contribution is. Good stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> highlight their contribution. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? If a member of the team asks a question to the facilitator instead of the facilitator asking, pose it back to the team and say, "How would we collectively answer this question?" I love that one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. This we're friends with you. Well, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> But that's other ways to get people engaged. Even giving them an assignment. If you know, that's one thing I love about teams too. You guys ever hear one of my favorite books? Uh, I love this book, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. You ever hear that? Get the book if you're married. Get the book if you're not married. Get the book if you want to, you know, try to get out there, even learn to get a job. Get the book. And the reason why I say that is this, and it comes, in, it's going to come and play with teams. By you knowing what a love language is, because it's acts of service, quality time, you know, things of that nature. And that's one thing that helped save my marriage. I'm being honest with you. I've been married 31 years with my beautiful wife. But around you know, year 12, it was getting a little rough, you know. But when I found out that book about the love languages, and I found out what her love language was, after all those years, 12 years we've been married, her, her love language is acts of service. So the more I mow the lawn, the more I clean up around the house, the more I do things around the house, guess what? The more love I have in my household. But the second one, which was one of the most important ones, because you have a diamond and then you have another, a second one. Her second one was quality time. And that was more powerful than anything. And I realized that by her and I spending time together, that's what she wanted most of all. And one thing, when I first met her, I was in the military. You know, I was you know, a young guy back then, about 165 pounds, <laughs> mean, lean, fighting machine back then. But nonetheless, we didn't have that much money. I was an enlisted soldier. I was only in there for a few years. But we, we didn't have a lot of money, so a lot of times we spent time together was in a car. And we drive back and we talk all the time. And that's what I had to get back to. So now my wife, my kids, they sit here and say, Dad, y'all, you guys never are. You're always happy. I said, they don't know what's going on in the car. <laughs> but sometimes we'll be in the front of the house. I'm serious. We'll go somewhere and we'll just sit in the car and sit there and talk. We we'll talk about our finance. We talk about our future. We talk about our travel. We talk about our vacation. We do these things because that's our that's our comfort zone. In the car, we get, got a bedroom, got a five bedroom house, but, but don't make it the car is where we can get our most communication and connect. With. Next one, teams again. When you are working with a team, you look at individual effort when you try to do things alone. But when you get at least 10% of people on your team to work with you together, you can see exponential and synergistic results easily. And that's one good thing about teams. Remember that when you get back in the workforce or even in your current position, get those teams together. Find that common ground. Find the connection. Now, connecting is more skill than a natural talent. What we're talking about here is it's going to take time to learn how to connect. It's not going to happen like that. Some people have that kind of person, you know, they have Myers-Briggs, ESTJ, or you know, whatever it is, you know. Some people have that in their personality where they're extrovert and some are introverts. But it takes time for you to learn how to connect. And you have to practice it. You've got to take time on your own and, and practice it every day. Five factors for connecting. The first one is this, relationships. When you're connecting with people, sometimes because of the person you know, and you want to connect with them solely because of that. They may have a certain job that you want, so you may want to connect them. You're not using them, but you're just trying to leverage that, that relationship in order to get what you want, okay? Don't look at it as a negative. Next one, insight. Someone may know something that you don't know and you want to connect with them. Next one, success. Somebody may be successful in an uh, area that you want to learn more about, and that may be the reason why you want to connect with them because of their successes. Next one, ability. I'm going to say two letters, and I want you guys to guess who this person is. And all you can do it. MJ. Michael Jordan. Uh, Michael Jackson, who else said the other one? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Okay, but you, yeah, I like your, I like your, I like your, I like your, I like your all right, all right, MJ. What is the organization that made MJ a billionaire? Nike. Nike. Yes. Yes. And they only connected with him because of what? His successes on the basketball court and his abilities, right? 
and it made him a billionaire. And it's making Nike billions. Last one, sacrifice. So we may connect with people because of their sacrifices. I connect with a, a homeless, uh, a home, not a homeless shelter, but a homeless feeding uh, organization in Manassas. Because of their sacrifice, what they do for the community. I go out there and speak for them. I go out there and help them out whenever they need me because of their sacrifice. Some people look at Mother Teresa. Some people look at Nelson Mandela and look at the things they did and they connect with people that are part of their organization because of that. Next one. There may be one single thing more important than the efforts to achieve meaningful work and fulfilling relations than to practice of the art of communication. Start communicating and connecting. Don't wait. Influence is not about impressing people, it's about connecting with them, okay? You understand that? Here we go. What do you see here? Two people. Two people, okay. What else do you see? Maze. Okay. Anything else? A trophy? <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter what you see. And that's what I'm trying to get you to understand here as far as connecting. You may see one thing, she may see something else, he may see something else, but the bottom line is you see something and you can find common ground from that. And the same thing we talked about beliefs, ideas, you, you, get, you got it on the head. It's about finding common ground. When you connect with people, you can't just start from their level, you gotta meet them where they are. And then that way you can build that relationship, you can grow that communication. You can do those things necessary to take you and propel them to another level. Now this is the most important slide, we're almost done. This is the most important slide of the whole training. I want you guys to repeat after me. M. M. O. O. R. R. E. E. M. M. O. O. R. E. Last one. M. O. R. E. Maximize. Opportunity. With relentless enthusiasm. <laughs> That's what you do. I don't care if you're looking for a job. I don't care if you have a job. I don't care if you're transferring from one position to another. I don't care what you're doing, your transitions. I don't care what it is. When you maximize opportunities with relentless enthusiasm, guess what? You won't fail. You're going to get through it. It may take time. It may make, you may feel down sometimes, but when you are continually maximizing opportunities with relentless enthusiasm, guess what? Your time will come. So remember this, do more, be more, achieve more, maximize, all right? Wow. Next one, here are the three key points I want you to get. I want you to read these for me. First one is what? Connecting. Together. Every situation. Next one. Three key points. Last one. Connecting is powerful. Find common ground. That's it. Now, any questions of me? Now, last before we go, I want to give you three complimentary offers. Three. You got it ready for that? What? First one is. A free or complimentary lunch and learn at your business or organization, or if you know someone, I either talk about leadership, communication, or personal development, professional development. Next one, it's powerful right here. Complimentary 30 minute coaching intake session. So if you want, so I want to do that, give me a business card or give me a note, just put a coach on the back and I'll call you up and arrange everything. And the last one is something powerful too. Complimentary five week virtual training on everyone community. In other words, we're gonna go deeper into this book and find out those practices and go delve into it even deeper. And it begins on Wednesday, May 15th at 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So give me a card if you want me to do that. Give me a card, write your name on the back. Make sure I got your email because I got to send everything virtual. All right? Thank you for your time, KMC and Barbara. Thank you. I want to wrap this book off. Oh, wow. How, how should I do this? Somebody help me out. How y'all want to do this? Somebody going to have this book before I leave. I'm going to get a, I don't know, I should probably get pieces of paper or something. No, I ain't going to do that. Who wants to be part of the, the training? The five week training? Anybody? I will. All right. So out of those, one, two, three, four, we have four people. You guys go ahead and 
and figure out if we're gonna do any, any, any more. You wanna do that? I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, there's the five week training. Uh, do you do it every five weeks or is it just? No, it's only five weeks. It started on 15th and it ends on, I believe, on June 19th. Or that's it. Yeah, that's it. It's a five one hour training. It's a group training and it's more like a virtual group coaching. So I, I mean, I know that's what I'm saying, but that's what it is. I ask questions to draw information out of you and we share collectively as a group. I'm, 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 in, oh, I'm in Kevin's group that actually is meeting tonight, and it's um, yeah, we meet fun. we meet on the phone um, every Thursday night for an hour from nine o'clock to ten o'clock, and Kevin gives a short like one or two sentence training about the topic, um, and then he asks a question and goes around and asks everyone, and we all have a chance to contribute. Then he asks another question, we all have a chance to contribute, and it kind of goes on. Um, we are doing the um, law. 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Yep. 15 Laws of Growth, and tonight is our last night. So we've been doing this eight years. I have training. a gift for them, too. Um, yeah, because Kevin came to the group that I'm in. I'm actually part of the Career Network Ministry out at McLean Bible on Tuesday nights. Um, and I've been attending there, and I also volunteer there. Kevin came, and he was one of the speakers, and he, you know, again, um, very generously. Um, offered you know this training session to anybody who was wanting to, to take it with him. There probably I think it started with about 19, 19 or twenty people. We kind of whittled it down with maybe six people in our group right now. Yeah. Um, finishing this group, it's actually it's a great class. Um, you know I've actually also met a couple of the people that are in the training because they come to CNM as well. So. Well, ladies and gentlemen, give a round of applause. And just for her giving that endorsement, <laughs> not only, hey, look, not only will she get this book, but she's going to get a pen as well. Ooh, the pen. <laughs> yes. No. You want a KMC empowerment pen. I was going to say, that the pen a lot. is a really big deal. That means so, a lot. You know, last that means a lot. Out of pen. The pen is a big deal. That means a lot. I'm telling you, when you get that pen, it means a lot. It's a nice pen. It's a nice <laughs> And you guys have a blessed day. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it.